Fight! Welcome to round six in the MR2 Spider Engine Swap Fight. If you're like me, you're probably asking yourself, how many more of these rounds are we going to be? And the answer is, I don't really know. But if you kept track of the score from the last episode, you'll notice that I was barely neck and neck with the uh, spider in this fight. And I know this is ridiculously nerdy, but I actually do keep track of the points. Um, as I edit the video, I just look and say, okay, well, the car kicked my butt there, gets some points, and I had a success here, I get some points, and I arbitrarily assign an amount to those. And yeah, I just kind of do it. So. I know that's really silly, but um, sometimes I feel like the like the car is really winning here. However, I know that I have your support in the form of you sitting at home with your significant other thinking to yourselves, gee, I'm really worried about this guy on the internet who's trying to install this engine in his car. He's having a hard time of it, and he's not the sharpest tool in the shed. And to you, I say, thank you. And there's light at the end of the tunnel, because in the next episode... The engine goes back in the car. <laughs> yes, that's right. Uh, but during this episode, and, and I never really mentioned this, but um, because when I'm working on the car, I basically use every curse word in the dictionary. I even make up a few extras, and sometimes <laughs> neighbors have been going by, and I, I'm a little embarrassed at myself <laughs> because they overhear me. Uh, it's, it's it's pretty bad. I think uh, some sailors would go by, man, what's up with that guy, right? So. Um, as a consequence, I've kind of made a decision to try and keep the swearing to a minimum on this channel. Uh, some of it's going to slip up eventually, I'm sure, but uh, the uh, point of that is that you'll hear a little bit of frustration in my voice in almost this very next episode. And so to whoosh and get back to my zen, I'll probably end the video with something a little more chill. Uh, until then, sit back, relax, fasten your seatbelts. We're in for a ride on the Rewiring Express. So I thought I was uh, more or less finished with the wiring harness, but uh, I forgot there were a couple of broken connectors on here. So I bought new ones at uh, Toyota, so now I just need to go find them and replace them. So I have to replace this starter connector, and I figured out how it comes apart. So if you have this issue, there's a white thing here. I've already it out part of the way you basically get it underneath and then it'll come out then in here I'm sorry if it's getting blurry you can see there's a metal and a plastic you stick your screwdriver between the metal and the plastic and you pry it the plastic up away from away from the metal and that's what happened last time anyway uh, stick it in there and pry up there we go and then it should come off installation is the reverse of removal and now I've got a new starter connector okay the alternator also had a connector that broke this uh, this is usually what happens when they break the cool thing is you can kind of tell I uh, hope it's in focus uh, when you get the new connector sort of how it goes so this has this white carriage locking mechanism here so you'll just need to get in there. I usually use these things to poke holes in my fingers, but in this case, I'm gonna try and use it to pull this out like that. Okay, by looking uh, at the new connector, it appears as though the clip for these is on the underside of the metal. Um, but as soon as I stuck it in there, it just broke the rest of the connector. Uh, and it did come out and it looks as though looking at it from here The fastener is on the bottom So it, if you try and deep pin these without breaking it may not work But uh, in my case, I don't care about breaking but what I'm going to do is make sure that I reinstall them One at a time so I make sure I get them in the right place So in he goes and you can see there's a little rubber um, Gasket back there that helps waterproof it so I'm just going to stick that back in. You can hear it click. Yeah, for that alternator connector, I recommend sticking, uh, so it does go underneath, but I recommend sticking something smaller than this, like just a pin would do the trick. If you go in, it'll shove something in between the metal and the thing that holds it and separate them apart. And then if you apply constant pressure pulling on the backside, 
you should feel it release when it's time to go. You'll have to be very careful. They're easy to break. This one's so brittle, it just basically tore apart. Uh, newer ones shouldn't be that bad, but, um, you know, if you need to reuse your old one or something, then you just have to be really careful. But, yeah, I believe it goes in underneath the metal on this alternator one. And then you put, push the lock in, and there we go. So unfortunately the third of the three connectors that I needed doesn't match. Um, so I guess he gave me the wrong connector. They're close but no cigar. So I'm gonna have to um, go back and get the right one. I was using this one broken on my car. There was enough friction to hold it in place but you know while I'm here I'd like to get this done. So uh, back to the parts store. If only I had a car to get there with. Just FYI, I put the um, alternator back on, and it is an interference fit with this pipe as far as rotating goes. So that kind of blows. You literally have to take both bolts out and slide it down in order to clear this pipe. So just FYI. So on the 1ZZ engine, to mount the coil pack, there's a bolt here and one down here. So it's eh, a little less than halfway toward my left. Over here, there's one here, one here, and then there's there. So basically, none of that stuff lines up. So I don't really know why nobody addressed this. Uh, it's another thing I'm finding that uh, other people don't address, but I find this very annoying because you can see that the wires here so <laughs> my camera light's going nuts, okay, make up your mind. Okay, it looks like auto's gotta go off. Anyway, um, hang on. This stud sticking up interferes with the wires and could chafe over time, but if I, I can't move it that way because this plastic hits right here. I mean, it's otherwise snuggles in there fairly nicely and they obviously they all line up, but, um, I don't know. I'm gonna. I mean, I'd prefer probably because it's just basically loose in there that I might make something to hold it down. But I can do that at any time. So right now I'm just gonna keep going. But FYI, that's that's something that nobody mentioned, and you might have to deal with in your swap. After a lot of fussing, I decided that it was better if the electrical wiring went on the outside and not through here. Uh, and I had a perfect bracket for it, but unfortunately, I was kind of coming up a little bit short on the alternator down here. So I took this bracket. I kind of mangled it quite a bit, but it, I really do like how neat it is. It just really slips right on there. All right, I'm now going to attempt the infamous wire swap on the throttle position position sensor says a sensor uh, this is it and I was confused at first because I thought it was plugged in that way but I went and looked I will show you in a schematic right after this um, why you need to switch those two wires but to do it I've done this before and I to be honest I kind of forgot whether I did this or not that's why I went and looked at the schematic but Basically, brown goes on the bottom. So when it's like that, BB, brown bottom. So my brown's in the middle, so I definitely haven't done the swap yet. And I did this over on the other one, and I should puncture myself a couple times. I usually do with these. So you pull that out. It would be really nice. So I'm gonna hang on to these and try and pull back this protective shield because I need more room. <clears throat> okay. Now, if I'm not mistaken, that is not enough. What you have to do is take something very small. Am I still on camera? Yeah. So take something very small and stick it in there. And I believe it goes underneath, if I remember, the other one. 
I'm going to apply a little pressure in the back. Oh, lovely. Nice little visit from a mosquito. I'd like to point out, oh, I got him, that it is November, it is December, like 17 or so. All right, my battery died, but what I was saying was really important. It was 83 degrees. No, I'm just kidding. I'm done complaining about the weather. <laughs> it's, what's important is um, how you do this so you don't break it because they're easy to break. So what you do after you pull out the white thing is you get on the bottom of the metal. You'll see the metal. You want to get on the bottom as right along the bottom as you can and push the screwdriver in. Now it's important to get on, as, on the bottom as possible because you got something that looks sort of like this. Let me see if my hands in there. Yeah. And if you come in here, you just hit. You have to be sliding against the metal. If the metal were up here, you have to be sliding against the metal so that you can hit that and push it down with your screwdriver and it'll release. In fact, if you do it right, as you push your screwdriver in, you'll basically push the connector out the back. The yeah, the wire, the yeah, the pin. You'll push the pin out the back. So now that I've done that successfully, ish, I just need to. This this thing gets in the way. Uh, so you got to kind of. It's really stiff and hard to get out of the way. That's what she said. So you pull that out out of the back. Got it. And that one's going to go on the bottom. So we push that one in. And it has to go the right way. Like that. I hope you all can see that. And when you do it right, I was going to say it should click, but it may not click with the white thing out. That didn't, I didn't hear a clicking noise. So I was trying to determine if I should swap these pins this way or cut the wires. There, you heard that one click. But this white one's in as far as it goes. And then just reseat the lock. So I hope that was all, hope that was all on camera. And hope that was clear. The metal is sort of square. The metal is sort of square. You put your screwdriver in right along the bottom of it and slide it and try and keep it on the bottom of it. And you may do a little bit of this action, wiggling, uh, not too much because you don't want to break the plastic, but that's how you get that connector out. Okay, also, don't do what I just did. I remember I told you brown goes on the bottom. Well, I'm so glad I came back and checked to see, and it was on top, and I thought, no way. And I checked, and sure enough, brown goes on the bottom. What I did was I took it out, I spun it around, and then I pulled the bottom to the middle and the bottom out and, and just did the wrong pins. Don't do that. Here's the electrical diagram for the throttle position sensor. The onesiez on the left, two ZZ on the right. And you can see that if you look at pin three on the one ZZ, it goes to VTA on the ECU at the bottom, which is also pin three on the two ZZ. But if you look at pin one on the one ZZ, it goes to VC. The VC on the two ZZ actually goes to pin two. So, since pin 3 is the same on both of them, clearly pins 1 and 2 need to be swapped. Okay, some time ago when I was trying to get rid of the check engine light, I was um, checking this and the connector tab broke off. This is one of the ones that broke on the harness, right? So I just sort of pushed it back on and I think the um, friction was fine and everything worked okay with it. But I, because you know, it's the metal to metal contact that really matters, right? But I'm just here to tell you that if you get a connector where the tab breaks, you should probably keep it in mind to go ahead and replace that connector as soon as you can because I couldn't even really depin this to put the new one on because I just barely put the screwdriver in and it just it just crumbled apart. I mean, look at that. I barely even put any pressure on that. So the good news is depinning will be easy. Will be easy. Yeah, it'll be easy. All right, here's another little hint. I just spent 20 minutes, literally 20 minutes, trying to get this black wire in. It would go most of the way and it would just stop. This one slips right in, no problem, each time. 
and I was bending it all around. I was trying to compare the two connectors and find out what was going on. And if you have that problem, my problem was right here. I hope this comes up on camera. Um, if not, I'll describe it. On the bottom, it goes flat. And where the two tabs stick down, it's basically split down the middle and those are folded out. On the other side of the opening where those tabs are created, the back side was out, was down, if you will. I had to push it in a little bit. That's what was getting caught. So I had to push the bottom back in a little bit and then it slipped in just fine. So if you have the same problem I do, try that. So if I angle it this way, then the MAF sensor plugs in just fine and there's no strain on it. But that is not going to work because the battery goes like right here. It's got to go off in that direction and now it doesn't reach. And I think I found out why the guy in Stark Reality and maybe others aren't having this problem is because they had a Celica version. I have the Corolla version which angles this up, which I think makes this longer and puts it further away from the MAF sensor. Sorry, MAF sensor. Um, now, how they handle this situation, I don't know because what I've essentially got is, you know, this big bundle and one going this way and one going this way. And the only way they can both go down is if that goes that direction, which it can't do because that's in the way. I don't see any way around that. Um, Yeah, I'm going to reevaluate this tomorrow. I'm, I'm out of time today. All right, so I just disconnected my harness from the bracket that I created and the bracket up here that was holding this section out to try and push it up against, figuring that would be the only way to make this uh, leg and that leg both come together and attach. And it did not work because... The harness is attached down here as well, and it won't allow it to move that way. Um, so, it looks to me like I, I've done you know, a fair amount of work securing this as is. And I think um, it's just not going to reach. The same thing with the MAF. It just doesn't get there. I've put this in pretty much as far as it'll go. So, I'm thinking, I hate to do it, but I think I'm going to cut some of these wires. I can try the loom first and see if I can pull some wire out, um, but generally it looks like I'm going to have to cut some wires, put them back together again. And uh, yeah, like I said, I didn't, I didn't see this as a problem before, and I'm not sure why it is for me. And it didn't seem like guy in Stark Reality. I couldn't see how he routed them, but he didn't. I don't remember him saying he cut any of that. Now maybe he didn't attach it down here, and and that would be okay. You wouldn't have to put this on like this, but. Uh, Choices. I'm not going to cover how I did the wiring because I think I've covered that before. Or I, I, yeah, or I will several times from here on out. But I think the only thing that's important to note here is that you should make sure you use high temperature wire um, insulation if you're going to be putting it near the engine or in, you know in the engine bay. Also, I I went ahead and keyed mine so I can't do them wrong. One's male, one's female. So this is the cruise control actuator. I'm going to pull this cable off because that's going to be the throttle cable up here and I need to make a bracket. So I'm just documenting that it goes on the bottom. It just makes it easier not to have to figure it out. But I do find it interesting that this doesn't seem, this throttle position here, you can see there's an angle on it and it's not 90 degrees to the old throttle. So it's, it almost looks like that rubber's in there kind of crooked, so uh, I'm not sure what's going on with that. Actually, it looks bent and everything. Huh. I think this must have gotten bent when I pulled the engine out or that's somewhere along the way because that does not look right. All right, so I apologize. There's a lot of light coming from behind. It's backlit, but um, let's see if I can get it better. Anyway, I'm making brackets today. It's what I'm doing. So what I'm going to do is make sure that this bracket is and if you look carefully, it's about two and three quarter inches uh, from here to the, to the front face there. Uh, 
two and three quarter inches because it's Merca. We use inches. And then from the top, we want to uh, make sure, I want to make sure that the bracket is sort of sticking out the same amount from this line here. So, like that, I would say it's eh, half inch. This isn't rocket surgery, I just need to get close. As best I could, I put this little stick in here uh, along a tangent to this radius. And when I put the bracket on, I bring it down to the black mark right there, and I make it um, perpendicular, the face perpendicular to the stick. You can see, if I move back, the bottom left corner is interfering right here. Just a little bit. Because I can't come out this, I can't come out ahead of it because this is too far. It's got to go backward, and I can't. So I'm gonna have to trim. I'm gonna have to trim a little off this corner, I think. So there's the bracket that I created for the throttle. I just took the original one, and I was I made this plate. Normally, I like to remove these sharp edges. I kind of wish I had, but now it's painted. I don't want to undo it and then have to paint again. Anyway, there's two holes here, and I was going to screw them in. That's just like it was on the other engine, but uh, they would have gone through and gotten in the way of the hose in the back, so I went ahead and just welded it on. <clears throat> and uh, it, when I was tightening this, the bolt, it was it was turning, and so I went ahead and put on a little support down here. I just It's not real pretty. I had to just kind of twist a piece of metal to keep it out of the way of the throttle here. Uh, just to keep it from doing that, um, but I think it'll work just fine. I've got all my distances are correct The hose fits on just fine. I also made a bunch of other brackets. Today was bracket day. I made this bracket Over here actually I made that last night So it's just an L bracket comes off. It's really strong and I bolted the stock bracket on there so that the um, Electrical wiring loom could attach. I made a bracket up here to hold these down. I don't I don't know why that was really necessary, but Toyota seemed to think it was. So I made a bracket that goes right here that comes off and picks up this guy for the wiring loom, but uh, it's drying right now. And I made a bracket down here that does the same thing. It comes off and it just clicks right on there. And I got all my distances right down here to attach. So uh, the only thing is it's a little bit loosey-goosey here, so I might make another bracket I can pull off. There's extra um, holes, threaded holes right here that I could use to make a bracket that holds. I think there's another one. Yeah, there's one right here as well. So I might make one more, but uh, daylight's growing short, so if I do it, I'm gonna have to do it quick. After that, I think I'm good to just basically plug everything in and move on to the next step. This is, took a lot longer than I expected, but I really just wanted things well sorted. Electrical problems are the worst, and you know, you just don't want them. So I was, I try to make sure everywhere that it might chafe I put some something soft or something something hard and then something soft against it to protect the wiring and this one's exposed which I don't like I kind of wish I'd put it inside now but man look at it all these pieces would have to come off for me to do that and then stick it in there I mean it, it's just you got to stop somewhere right now there's bracket number 1227 and that's where it goes Okay, I believe I am finally finished with all the wiring that goes on the, all the wiring that takes place on the engine before it goes in the car. The rest of the wiring happens after it's installed. And as far as I'm concerned, this is just review and it's really not necessary, but I know that when I was looking on how to do this, I really wanted to get a certain view on other people's work to see how things went. So I'll just show you how I did it. There are different routes to take. Um, so it was a review. Down here uh, are the oil pressure and oil temperature gauges that I added in the sandwich. And then, of course, the original oil pressure gauge right here. And uh, that goes up this direction. And I actually made a little bracket right here. Uh, hopefully you can see this right here. Put my finger there, yeah. Uh, to hold them onto the dipstick, but that's the way I did it. Of course, you could do it any way you want. That also holds the crank position sensor, which I bolted to to here. There was another bolt. I didn't want to op I didn't want to um, loosen the bolt that held the gasket in place. 
So I attached it to this extra one here, which I think is supposed to be anyway. And then I came up, I made that bracket as I said. Um, on the rest of my loom comes up this way and joins this bundle, which is just standard onesie Z stuff. This should be pretty easy to figure out, all this stuff here. I did make the little bracket down here. It's just kind of like a little L to hold the knock sensor. And then my bundle comes up this way. It's on the outside of this tube. I tried to go inside, it just wasn't working and I think it's not the right way to go. Uh, I'm not really sure where that's, uh, this is an O2 sensor and I'm not sure what direction it goes. I'll find out after it goes in the car. These are grounds, this goes on the, on the um, basically on the firewall or top of the body if you will. It comes across, I made a bracket here from the old ones easy one, I just basically flattened it out. Unfortunately this clip is old, it doesn't really want to stay clicked on, see? And anyway, it comes around this direction, and this of course is where I started running into all kinds of issues. And, and in fact, I actually did it backward, I kind of went this direction, because I knew this only fit one way, so I started there. And I did make something to hold down these guys, again, not sure that's necessary. But this guy was short, and this guy was short, so I did wind up stretching this wire. They call it stretching, you just cut and you add a piece in, right? And what I, I really don't like doing that because I was cutting the original factory loom. It's one for two. If you're if you're connectorizing it, you're not just putting one extra connector in, you're putting two, right? Because you have to add a piece in, so it's on either end. So um, one thing I did do here, and I unfortunately wound up having to do that with a MAF sensor too right here, was when you cut your wires, don't call, cut them all the same length because all the little connectors will um, stack up next to each other and create a bulge. Stagger them and then they'll fit together better inside these looms. Otherwise you'll have to use a loom that's um, it's called split loom. This split loom stuff will be a much larger diameter than you really need for the wires. So just a little hint there. Uh, this one will get plugged in this O2 sensor. That'll get plugged in after it's in. These are the two that came from Monkey Wrench that go down to the you know to the extra stuff for the lift that wasn't available. EVAP gets added later. So then this all gets added later. I think this should all be stock right here. MAF will connect here when that's in. And the rest is all the wiring you've seen before. So uh, I hope that helps somebody. This part was actually a lot more challenging than I thought because I just didn't see any way to make this and this and this and this all work without, they're all pulling against each other because this guy's in the way. Oh, another thing I didn't mention that uh, I hope this is okay to do is I picked up the grounds. There are two grounds that, remember I mentioned those bosses that are down, were down here and they're not, they're not here on this engine, right? Um, I connected the grounds for those. They have, there are two extra connect, um, threaded holes on this uh, oil control valve body. There's one right here. Hopefully cameras on that and there's one right through there and I use those for my grounds So I'm assuming that they will function as okay grounds if not I don't know what to do because honestly those are uber short and they're just not gonna fit anywhere else So uh, that's what I did Yeah, the one I forgot to mention was the noise suppressor which is right here I connected to the intake manifold here now, mine came with one down here. I'm just gonna call that a spare, because the, uh, of course the wires couldn't reach that one either, right? So uh, that was most convenient for me, but that's what I did. All right, so I'm just gonna take this off and just documenting how this comes off so that I can make sure I get it back on the right, the right way. So there it is. I just wanted to show the tricky part here on this removal. It looks to me so this shaft doesn't want to come off. This piece doesn't want to come off the shaft. And it looks I undid this, which didn't help. And I saw on another channel what you do is you hammer this out, and then it'll come out. All right. When you put this part on, you have to rotate it until you can see through the shaft. As you can see there. Um, let me see the camera is doing, there we go. Um, 
because there's a notch. So if you rotate it a different way, part of that hole will be covered. So you got to make sure it's circular like that. And then the important thing is this pin that goes in there has a flat on it. I don't know if you can see that or not, but that flat, yep, has to then align with that notch. Otherwise, it won't go all the way in. So the best way is to is to sort of move this part around while you're moving this part around and pushing it. And if you do it right, it should go most of the way in on its own. Okay, so what concerned me was that you can see where the paint line is. And uh, when I pushed in, it didn't go anywhere near that. But you don't have to worry about it, I don't think, because I noticed as I tighten it down. Let's see if I can get my hand out of the way. Oop. When I tighten it down, you can see it, it draws it in. It may not go all the way, but I don't think that'll matter because what really matters is can you shift it this way, this way, in, out. That's really pretty much all that thing does. So, and that explains, it's very tight, so that explains why I had to pound that thing out with a hammer. You can still see a bit of the line, but frankly, I think I'm there. I really don't think I need to, to go any tighter, so I'm going to just stop there. Uh, and then you can see this piece here. It's important to get this guy in the slot, because that's what's going to move that thing out. This is just a weight to help with the uh, shift feel. Pretty sure. Correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, and then this piece goes on here with a shaft behind. You can see my paint's coming off. So this is what it should look like while I'm in there, a phrase I'm going to make a t-shirt out of one day, I'm going to put these washers in. They go here. Monkey Wrench Racing sent them to me. That effectively would push this uh, pivot point out a little tiny bit by, these are fairly thick washers, but they're uh, not even an eighth, I wouldn't say, an eighth of an inch. I would say it's I don't know, whatever, it's a thick washer, <laughs> and you stick it in there, and apparently that'll help you get reverse a little bit easier. Well, that's it, and I think I've uh, returned to a lead over the spider in this fight. So I'm really excited for tomorrow when I get to actually put the engine back into the car. And uh, I don't know if I mentioned it, but it was like 84 degrees the other day, and it plummeted overnight to like 65. Yeah, I had to put on a long sleeve shirt. I mean, talking about crazy or what? So uh, in order to bring back my state of zen, I've decided to just prop my feet up by the fire. So happy holidays. Thank you.